The eagerly anticipated second season of Hulu's Emmy Award-winning series The Handmaid's Tale had its world premiere at Hollywood's prestigious Grauman's Chinese Theatre on April 19th. For fans of Margaret Atwood's classic novel, this latest batch of episodes will finally answer the question, what happened after the book's ending? It's a question that's long obsessed the show's creator, Bruce Miller. I read the book 30 years ago. I've had 30 years to think about season two. It's a book that begs for a season two. I mean, the most frustrating thing about the book is how it ends. So um, I think that we very much wanted to, to continue Margaret Atwood's world and Margaret Atwood's story. And so in the first year, we were able to find a way to bring that to life. And so it gave us a good foundation for season two when we're moving forward, but very much in that world. And also in that Margaret Atwood miss, you know, that kind of the feel of her world and her stories. Um, so, but I think there are lots of things that are mentioned in season one we didn't ever get to. There were things that we kind of brushed up against, um, interesting places, interesting ideas that we didn't get to explore. And that's the beauty of having another season and another season and another season. The series stars Elizabeth Moss as June Osborne, later known as Offred, a woman forced into sex slavery under a theocratic dictatorship in the not-too-distant future. Joseph Fiennes co-stars as Commander Fred Waterford, a high-ranking government official who uses June as a concubine in order to start a family with his barren wife. Given the show's overwhelming acclaim and frightening relevancy, Fiennes felt the heat to follow up the success of season one with an even better season two. Well, there's sort of two types of pressure. The, the, the success of the show and people's enjoyment of the show. Um, there was the pressure, obviously, in season one of keeping the show authentic to, to the, the book as much as you can with an adaptation from novel to television. But also just with the political zeitgeist and the movement that's going on and how pertinent and prescient the show has been and resonates with people with themes going on in today's society. It's keeping that pressure um, and momentum going. There's a pressure to, to, to keep our show aligned with those conversations. Part of that pressure no doubt comes from the first season's impressive Emmy Hall. The show won eight prizes from the TV Academy last year, including Best Drama Series, Best Drama Writing for Miller, Best Drama Actress for Moss, and Best Drama Supporting Actress for Anne Dowd as the villainous Aunt Lydia, who rules the handmaids with an iron fist. I'll never get over it, not as long as I live. Yeah. Every time I think about it or I go back to that moment, it's the goosebumps from head to toe, and I'd be in tears in about two minutes, <laughs> two, less than that. It was just... I was certainly surprised and, and thrilled and pleased. I mean, every everybody works so hard on this show. I can't even tell you. It's a group of professionals with the highest work ethic, starting from Lizzie, the whole cast, the whole crew. So you're just so, you're proud of the work you do, and then you're so proud that people recognize the work that you do. The whole thing, it's humbling. You are filled with, honestly, a profound gratitude. Because, you know, we're all doing our job, right? We, we do the best we can. And, and when someone says, hey, come here a minute, go up there, here, you know, we just hope everyone had a little minute with that in their lives. I mean, it was, it was extraordinary. But it does put pressure on. I mean, it's terrifying. I mean, how can it not be? The show has found special relevance in the wake of the Me Too movement, a rallying cry for female empowerment against sexual harassment and assault that suddenly brought the events of the book closer to home. Its prescience has not been lost on the cast and crew. The Me Too movement hit the, our staff and our show very hard. It was our community. It's our community, it's our friends, it's our it's the people we know and love and work with who were getting victimized and we didn't recognize it when it happened and then they didn't feel, people didn't feel comfortable talking about it and both of those things are just making you feel like a shit. I mean, um, and making you feel like a terrible boss and a terrible friend and that's been a lot of kind of hurt from from point of view of how do we make a more comfortable workplace where more people can can talk about those things. Um, but uh, I think that the way our show fits into that is by not trying to stuff it in there, by just telling Alfred's story and let other people decide where it goes in their life and in their philosophy. I mean, that, that, that's um, an incredible thing to see our heroine, who's all about resistance um, in, in, a, in a really creepy, dark world, um, and then seeing in our world the resistance of women coming together in unison and solidarity resisting um, to see these two 
powerful entities mirroring each other is, is kind of extraordinary um, uh, and inspiring. And I, I think over and above the complexity of our show, I think you've got to keep pushing that, you know, having a voice and resisting and being powerful is inspiring, so keep inspiring each other. For Miller, that change starts with staffing his creative team with several strong female voices. More than half of our writers, most of our writers are women. Um, uh, most of our directors, half of our directors were women uh, this season. Um, and uh, we had a female DP and we have female heads of departments as much as we can. Um, I think it's just, you need that. I mean, anytime you do a show when you're me, you look at the, the, the strengths you have and the deficits that you have and you try to reinforce your deficits and one of the deficits it does, I'm a boy. And so there are certain things you cannot know walking through the, bo the world in my skin versus walking through the world as a woman. The interesting thing is you find out that all the women in the room have very different experiences. Once you say, well, what's this like? There's no answer, which is uh, a testament to how honest they are and also how comfortable they are explaining stuff to me and to other people on the range staff who have lots of honest questions and their and their interest is in hearing it. Their interest is, okay, what does this really feel like? I need to understand. And it's been wonderfully educational in that way. And that's a testament to how uh, trusting and, and smart and uh, committed to the show these people are, the, the women on the staff, because they're willing to explain to us idiots what it's like to be a woman. Yeah.